Hi guys and welcome to C++ tutorial of payroll management system developed using C++ Builder. So let's enter some other new data. You see all of these data in here? Right here. Just click on that tab and there they are. And click on payroll system. If you click on the database every single information we have in here is also saved straight onto the database and it's coming up now there we, there we go check out the table there so what I'm gonna do is close that and let's enter new data in here so we come right here click on plus there every single information is gone enter the candidate details and the name let's say the name is Tony Tony Allen and Tony Allen lives in Island let's say Allen Lane number three Allen Lane let's put an S there and gender is male uh, let's say is a medic and um, those code okay position oh department as in medic and let's say it is a doctor and here there and here that is his wages overtime nope and that's it so all we then need to do is to state the tax period let's say this is the pay uh, let's go for the third month okay somewhere there and here tax period three uh, pay payroll name we can just call that medic as well medical and I number and that's the other code and tax code there so all we then need to do is to come right here and just click on total there we go all of the necessary information is officially added okay if we come in here now we should be able to see the details of Tony Allen right there look at that okay let's go back in here and you can just tap oh now let's check if we have the details of Tony Allen on the database so let's double click on the database and that's coming up double click on the table right there that's the details of Tony Allen and I'll see you guys with a full tutorial shortly Hi and welcome to payroll management system developed using C++ and using the C++ builder by Embercado. I'm going to start by going to file here and I'm going to select new let's select Windows VCL application just click on that and right there the development environment is ready now let's increase this form size I'm gonna come right here where we have form height let's come in here I'm gonna make that 720 and right underneath here where we have width I'm gonna make that 1386 right and let's give it a name you see this caption I'm going to ch change that to payroll management system there that is changed right up here now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here and I'll just type in C page controller or control score just paste that right there 
have my page control I'm going to kind of like extend it all the way to the right and below as well there now let's bring it right down okay but well, that's one thing let's come in here I'm going to drag this down because I intend to add title up there and right here I'm going to go back to the palette again let's type in panel yep just uh, add the panel there let's drag it that much and this very panel I'm going to come in here to change the caption just enter payroll management system in there and let's change the font size of that let's come right down here font there let's make it a little bit readable bold and readable let's see I'm going to make that 52 that seems to be a little bit too big all right so drag this down away okay now the next thing we want to do is you see this my page control I intend to add extra page to it right click on it and select add new that's the first one right click again and add another one that is the second one okay so for the very first one let's change the caption of that to maybe payroll system roll system and the other one so I'm just gonna call it payroll database so we store all our information there when you select it make sure you select the the interface and scroll right down or up there and look for the caption so I'm gonna enter payroll details or database there we go all of the information that we will have in here will be stored in here that's good so now let's do one more thing I'm gonna get hold of this very panel let's come in here just enter T panel there and just dry draw it right here you see this T panel that I've just added I'm gonna change the color to maybe something silver yeah we can change it to silver that's fine let's come right up here I can see the silver that's it there and get rid of the text content in there okay so just drag it out much I just want to give it a bit of contrast there we go and bring it out the way down okay all right so let's drag this down a little bit and bring it down a little bit more okay so if I run it now let's just run and see how that's gonna look like there okay, that is how it's looking now okay not too bad okay now I'm going to do one thing exit out I'm now going to then add another panel here Let's come in here, grab a panel. See panel. Grab that and just draw it right here. There we go. Now this panel that I have up here, let's change the back color. So let's go straight to color, get rid of the text content and come right here. Let's see if we can get anything that will be a little bit lighter than silver. let's go for no that is a bit yeah but in face works much better and bring this here okay it's looking good now I can just copy and paste so copy that let's see we have enough room copy and paste we have two and I'm going to need one underneath here paste again cut it off paste it right here okay bring it down right down here and 
take it right down. Okay then. Now, uh, let's do one thing because I may kind of like run out of room, but let's copy this first. Copy this and paste it right here. This is going to be a very huge tutorial, so I suppose you guys are ready. So bring this all the way down here. Somewhere there. Now copy it again. Click on the plan, paste. There. Okay, looking good so far. I'm going to run it. Let's just run and see how it's looking. Alright, this is how it's looking. It's coming up gradually. I like that. I'm going to do one thing. Let's take this up a little bit. And yeah. Now drag this all the way. All the way down here. That is good. Yeah, that is fine. Maybe take this up a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And let's see. So, I'm just designing as I go along. So, I may end up changing one or two things. But for now, let's set you for this. Okay, let's go to the design right here. Sorry, the payroll data. The payroll data. Maybe we should copy this. Yeah, I'm gonna copy this. Copy and paste it right in here. There we go. That is fine. So right inside the payroll data, we will then enter a data review. Bring this here. For those of you, if you understand how to design the in an interface, you can just skip this part of it. So I'm gonna come in here now. Let's look for we look for data review there. There we go. So click on that and I'm gonna put it right here. That is it. Just drag. Okay, that's looking good. Alright. Now let's go back to the main page of this application and right here I'm going to enter as follows. I need a label. Come right here. Let's set it L. No. TL. Now should give me a label. Paste that here. And what else do I need? I'm going to need C D B E Okay, paste that right here. Let's move that up here. There. Uh before I start all of this, let me do one thing. I better save this application because it's getting bigger now. Let's go to file, save. just call it pay now I'm gonna call it CPP CPP pay payroll management system okay let's select the folder I have a folder there already that's the folder okay So I'm going to yeah let's save that in there. Let's copy this. Save. And I'm gonna save the whole project as well. They save that. And so that's no let's just put an S in front of it. Save and save again. Double S. There. Okay, that is fine. 
Now, if you notice, I seems to have I've already added my database that I intend to use right in there. Let me show it to you guys now. Uh, let's come right in here, and that is it. Payroll system. That is the database I intend to use. Okay, I've just double click on the databases and access database. There's nothing in the table. There's nothing on the table. That is it right there. And if you right click, you can go to the design view. That is it. That's just my table. Every single data type is just short text. Okay, the choice is yours. Whatever you want to, how you want to design it. In total, there's 25 records there. Or 20, yeah, 25 records. 25 fields, I mean. So I'm going to close that. We'll come back to this later on. So minimize that. Now, let's continue with this. Okay, we need to increase the font size of this. Move that up and come right here. Font. Let's see. Where's font? Increase the font size to something a little bit readable. Maybe about 22. There we go. That seems too big. So let's reduce it a little bit more. I'm going to make it, make it 18. Alright. And just drag this that much. And this is going to be my like employer ID. So our employee ID, I mean. Come straight to the caption and just change that to employee ID. ID. There we go. And this, the text box is going to be known as. Let's select that. It's a database text box. So I'm going to just change that to DBE employee ID. Okay, then. Yeah, that will do. Right, so let's copy that. Control C, copy, paste. We have two. Now I'm going to paste another one. Three. Paste again. We have four. And add one more. We have five. There. Okay, so let's change these details here so this one is going to be let's change that to full name let's come straight to the caption right there there so this is going to be full name and here let's change this to address right and here that is going to be address now I'm going to change this one to maybe postcode yeah let's go for that we change that to postcode And this is going to be postcode. Let's come straight to the name here. DBE postcode. There we go. Now let's do one thing. You see this postcode? I'm going to reduce that and copy this. Copy the tool then. Control C and paste. And this is going to be gender. Bring this here. And as for this, I'm going to delete this. Let's come in here and get CDBE combo box. Let's paste that in there. The combo box, let's change the data in there. Now let's change the font to 20. I think 18, 18, 
there we go that's good and change the data in here to where is gender so that will be gender now this combo box is going to be known as DBC gender there alright looking good so far now that that is done this one okay let's change this other one to I'm going to delete this and just copy this other one here or oh, let's see here yeah, delete it and copy all of these here control C and let's paste that in here bring it down and then change this I want to change that to position and department yeah position okay that's the position so let's change this one to DBE position and this is going to be department it's coming here where is it it's right here no up here caption department yeah that will do all right then okay and this will become department let's just drag this that much and repeat the same thing for this one Okay, this will be department. All right. Now all of these other ones, let's just drag them that much. I repeat the same thing for this other one. Right, and this one as well. That's good. So bring it down. Now let's take care of the wages. The case of wages, let's come in here. We should be able to fit five of those in here. Let's see. I'm gonna copy, copy these ones. Control C and paste. There we go. And one more here. Copy, no, let's copy these ones. Copy and paste it right underneath here. Yeah, that's good. And right below it, I'm going to get rid of this one. I don't need this one. Copy this, copy and paste it right here. We enhance that later on. Right below it, I'm going to enter. Let's copy all of this. Copy and paste it right here. Then we change the data around. Paste another one here. Now delete this. Okay, so this one here, I'm going to change that to net pay. And in the text box, this one will be known as net pay. Let's come in here and change the default name. Yeah, net pay. And this is going to be known as default. No, that will be known as deduction. Let's come right here. Deduction. Changes to deduction. And right here, this is going to be known as gross pay. Let's come right up here gross pay 
change this to gross pay where is the variable name right here there we go right looking good so far so I'm going to save and let's run it and see how that looks like yeah move that up okay that's how it's looking guys it's coming up pretty good now let's do one thing if you notice when I run it the form was kind of like up here or down here so I'm gonna exit out let's select that very form and come right up here you see where we have uh, a line I'm gonna set it to top so that is good so if I run it now that should be right at the top let's see you see that so that's what I want good now here let me populate here as well and here that is going to be the calculator interface or oh, we can make that to have um, calculator yeah why not that might take a long time okay let's see I've, I've made up my mind now right here I need all of the information for the wages so first and first let's copy something here copy that copy this copy and paste that right here paste take it up and drag this that much copy the same thing here okay and this is going to be pay dates or pay day whatever pay date and this becomes pay date there we go and this becomes tax period let's come right here that's tax period okay that's fine yeah and this I'm gonna delete that let's use combo box for that and paste that right here for the tax period we can always enter the numbers in there and change the variable name to tax period there we go it's coming up pretty good okay I guess you guys get the whole idea so all I'm just gonna do now is I'm gonna copy copy this let's paste it right there so let's just paste this there we have let's copy this again copy paste and copy and paste again we have five copy paste yeah and we can add two more copy and paste there we go guys there now I'm gonna save run let's see how that's looking okay check that out guys it's coming up pretty good okay grab a button we need a calculator yeah we have one here I'm also going to need just a T B E no B T E yeah T E text editor yeah that's all I need here all right um, let's change the font size of the both of them to 18 as well we may have to change the, f the details of this font I don't know but let's just put 18 and see okay well, what about this 18 drag this here 
Now copy this. We have two. Um, let's increase the size a little bit. Copy and paste. Right. Yeah, almost right. That's fine. That will do. All right. Now we can then copy and just spread it along. Okay, so let's copy this and paste. Copy, paste. Okay, coming up good. And just one more. Copy and paste. There we go, guys. Yeah. And all I then need to do is just change the data in here. Come in here, that's going to be 7. We have 8, 9, subtract. We have 6, 5, 4, 1, 2, 3. Division. Multiplication equals and decimal then zero okay and here I'm gonna call that C E and here I'm gonna call that C this is going to be backspace and so on now this very one let's come in here change the text to zero and let's get it aligned to the right there should be something to align here align right okay let's go straight into word document and look for a backspace now inside word document i'm going to come in here select insert and uh, you see where we have symbol click click on symbol and that's the backspace that i want you will always find that very backspace in uh, wingings where is it start with w let me just type in W in there. There we go. Right there. And if you scroll right down a little bit, you should be able to get the sign that I'm looking for, the, or the symbol that I'm looking for. That is it right there. Insert. Okay, insert. And I'm also going to insert plus minus. Close that. Copy the backspace and paste it right in here where is the caption paste now all we have is just a dot let's scroll right down we need to change the font type come down here just click on that type in w wingings that there, there we go that takes care of that in the case of plus minus i think we, that we don't need to change anything in there so let's go straight to the caption caption paste that in there plus minus there we go that is it so I'm gonna save that and click on run right there guys look at the interface coming up very good now you see here I'm just gonna add navigator in there so close that let's go right down you see here come right here let's say tdb i think it's a b e nav no there, there we go that's it navigator and just drag it here that is it that's my navigator right there okay so this other one we just extend it that much we're gonna make it look a bit more presentable and this as well drag it like that and this other one just drag it right 
Okay, so what we want to do now is to finish up with the namings. So let's come right here. You see here? I'm going to change that to maybe City Benefit or City Within Allowance, something like that. So let's just set for City Benefit. There we go. And the text editor here, we change that to DBE City Benefit. There. The next one is going to be basic pay or basic salary. So let's come right here, the caption basic salary and change this to DBE basic salary. Now, here I'm going to change that to overtime. Over time, and this is going to become DBE overtime. With the overtime, I'm going to enter a default value in there. So let's say we have a zero in there. I think this is like a text box. So here somewhere, let's see. Okay, I'm going to enter the default value on the database. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now we have in here the next one is going to be task or tax. So let's go to the caption here. Tax. And this is going to be known as tax. And this other one here, uh, let's call that pension. Right. We have the pension there. Okay, now this will be pension. Okay, all that is done. Let's come in here now. Take care of this. Uh, this that is correct, and this one is going to be payroll name. I don't know. Yeah, payroll name that'll do. And this is going to be payroll name. DBE payroll name. And the next one is going to be NI number. NI number. And here that will be. Let's change that to C. DC. DBC and I um, I think I'm using the wrong yeah let's get rid of that get rid of this we just need an ordinary one in there paste this here and change this one to BBC and I you don't want to use a combo box for that. Undo that. Say an I number. There. And after that, we change this one to an I code.
that's not valid paste that back in there this should be here up here select this caption and I could right copy that select this DBA and I could the NI code tax code and this is task code DBA task code I'm doing all of this because of uh, the comment I received some people were unable to name the co components so this one is going to be taxable taxable pay tax able pay and here that's going to be ah we have to change that that's not copy this and this one as well I'm gonna have to change it delete copy and paste do that again, copy, paste, paste again, no copy, and paste. Right. Taxable pay. And this is DBE, taxable pay. This will be for student loan. If you have any loan as a student, come in here and just change that to student loan. This is student loan. Almost there. This is going to be pensionable. Let's come right here and just change that to pensionable. Okay, we have pensionable pay and and the other one and I pay and this is going to be and I pay and I payment here that's going to be pensionable. Right now, let's move this back a little bit so that we can see pensionable properly. So come right here and just drag it back, select it all, and drag. Okay, so that'll do. They all have their names now, and as for this, so this one is going to be BTN. First of all, let's name this one. Let's come right here, just go to the name. Where is it? Name right here. So I'm going to just call that TXC display. Right, this one we call that BTN. BTN backspace. Let's say back space. BTNCE BTNC and BTN just called up PM PM BTN the plus sign I say addition BTN9 BTN8 
just copy the BTN BTN 8 BTN 7 BTN 4 BTN 5 BTN 6 BTN sub BTN 1 BTN 2 BTN 3 BTN divide let's just say die BTN malt BTN equals BTN dot and BTN O there we go now all the components have their respective names so click on save that and let's run it and see okay guys this is how it all looks for now right so that is fine i'm gonna exit out and let's select all of the number buttons and we're going to use an event for this button so let's come in there you see where we have events click on that and let's just drag this so that you guys can see what I'm about to do in the object inspector so let's go into click right inside click I'm going to change that to number click press enter there we go now we have an area where we can add a function for all of those buttons but before I do that you see right underneath the form I'm going to create some variables in there so let's come down just say double I'll call that first first number comma second number comma and I'm going to call the next one results and enter semicolon I will also declare a string variable that I'm going to call operators there we go now back into my event called number click for all of the buttons first of all I'm going to create an object and that object will be let's say T buttons and the name of the T buttons we should add a, a pointer there and the name of the T button is going to be BTN equals open a bracket and we say T buttons close close that that will be sender there now using an if statement so let's say if txt display pointer text equals equals zero remember I did enter a zero value in there then the display will be equals whatever we have inside txt paste that in there equals btn whatever we have in the caption I mean btn caption else come right down here enter coil braces else is going to be 
display equals display plus whatever come in here equals display plus btn caption and that should take care of my that should take care of all of those buttons okay I'm gonna save that let's run it click on run let's see there we go should be able to just click on any of the numbers that is good okay that's fine so exit out now let's go back into the design view here I'm now going to select all of these operators here the arithmetic operators and let's go back to the events okay right in here so I'm just going to call that click operators operators so that is the name for all of those press enter and I'm also going to give it a name so maybe just copy this as well copy that paste that in here the object is already created anyway so I'm gonna come down in here and just call this very or use this very first variable here right underneath here enter that so whatever value that I entered inside my display here grab that it is stored inside first number come right down and let's uh, since it's double I'm going to say dot to double okay yeah that takes care of that error now that that is done and we then say whatever we have in here that is stored inside the first number so in that case we need to check out what is operator grab that operator is going to be btn equals btn point dot caption there we go and at the same time let's clear this grab that come down here and let's get it cleared there we go that should take care of my operators save and let's run that as well there we go so if I click on any of these the test content should disappear for yeah that's good once you click on any of that it's stored inside the first num now that is fine so let's take care of equals so that is the equals I'm gonna double click on the equals and right here with the equals first of all now let me grab this inside the equals I'm gonna say second num equals as follows now let's use an if statement to validate the operators if operator operates with an s that's what i call it is not operator operates if is equals equals the plus sign then i want as follows a thing that is called results very good grab grab that come right down say result equals as follows first number plus second number that is that now we now want to store whatever we have inside result right in here so say equals result 
so that takes care of the very first one well, I'm gonna copy all of these and let's use an else statement else if else if if it's subtraction this will become subtraction grab that now take care of the next one and the next one so if this is division this will become division if this is multiplication and this will become multiplication and that takes care of that so let's try that out that is the equals taking care of so save and I'm gonna run it and just check that out see how that works okay so let's say 5 multiply by 3 there we go that's fine let's divide that by 9 that is good okay plus whatever all right exit out now the calculator is almost done so we need to take care of backspace clear entry clear plus minus and the decimal first of all let's take care of this decimal first double click on that and inside the decimal I'm going to use an if statement if not txt display pointer text dot post if it's if it has that close that again there we go so what we would then want the system to do is take that off take the t off right what we then want the system to do in that case is this txt display will be equals txt display plus the decimal sign that should take care of that so if we run that now first of all let me save that run there we go so if I select whatever there we go we can only add one decimal look at that so that's fine the decimal is working so let's take care of the backspace double click on the backspace and right inside the backspace the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna declare an integer variable and this integer variable I'm gonna call it Q and this Q itself is going to be t taking the following or initialize it with the following txt display point to text dot length enter parenthesis now use it an if statement if Q equals equals one the following is going to happen txt display will be equal zero paste that there equals the value zero else say declare a variable that will call d d will be equals txt display dot delete q and leave one in there okay then txt display will be equals d and there that is that now 
Let's run that and see how that will work. But take it from here. All right, let's see what's going to happen. If it's equals equals 1, then that should default back to 0. So let's run it now and see. We have an error there. Let's see. Oh, I should have ended that with semicolon there. Try that again. Run. It's coming up now. Okay, let's enter some value in there and make use of the backspace. You see that default back to zero, so that's good. There we go. So that's fine. Save that. Now let's take care of clear entry. Enter space in there. So with the clear entry, I'm just going to first of all, let's copy this, get that to be, let's empty, empty that, or undo that, copy, come down here, paste, empty, and underneath I'm going to declare two variables that I'll call F and S, first number and second number, there, now, first number equals whatever we have inside the variable first num then s would be whatever we have inside second num good so now let's clear f and also clear s there. That should, you see this from here down here? That should take care of the clear entry. And here, I'm going to copy that and let's use that for this very one here. Clear. Paste that in there. Now, let's try both out. This very one. Enter zero in here. Now, Save, click on run. The clear entry will always clear the maybe the second value that you enter or whatever value you enter. So let's say eight multiply by five. We don't want the last entry, so I'm gonna clear that and change it to two. So the answer if it's correct that should give me sixteen. There we go, that's fine. So let's clear everything there so that's fine it's working it's multiplied by 9 equals that very good so everything is working apart from this now let's take care of the plus minus so double click on the plus minus so with the plus minus first of all I'm going to declare a variable that I'm going to call Q and I'm going to say Q equals the following. Grab this and just paste it right here. And I say dot convert to double. And close that up. Now let's say txt display pointer text that will be equals minus one multiply that by q close that and that's all there is to that so whatever we have in here we multiply it by minus one that's all that's what i've just done so save that, run. And if that works the way we want, that means the calculator is all taken care of. So let's enter whatever value in there. Plus, minus, look at that. So if you say multiply that by 2, yeah, that's correct. There. 
multiply by four. There we go. There. And welcome back to the third part of the payment management system tutorial developed in C++ Builder. I'm going to exit out. Now what I want to do is I'm going to need a button here. So let's go straight to the palette and I'm just going to type in BT. Just grab a button, dump it right here. First I'm going to need two of those. There we go. And let's grab one more. BT. There. And let's change the content of those. So let's come in right here. Let's pin that down. And I'll change this to maybe total. And the other one, I'm going to change it to exit. And just make it more suited for the area. So, okay, something like that. Now, let's give them a name. Come right down here. Now, I'm going to call this one BTN exit. BTN exit and the other one I'm going to call that BTN total there that will do now let's increase the font now oh, let's make the font size maybe 9 bold let's see what's going to happen okay that's fine well pronounced so let's come into Oh, there's no. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. Let's put this right at the edge here. First of all, paste it right here. Select these two and just move it. Right, then bring this one right here. There we go. Alright, that's not too bad. Select it all. Now we have a bit of room there. Okay. That's nice. Okay, now before any other before we do any coding or before we carry on with the coding, let me grab some of the connectors. So the first one I'm gonna go for is T A D O connection. And that, let's paste it maybe here. Do that again. T A D O connector. Oh, let's move that where it was meant to be. We have our T A D O connector there. I'll take it up. That's fine here. Now I'm going to also go for T. A D O table right grab a table and just paste it right there that's good and finally let's say T data source there we go that's it right there grab that and just paste it here there we go now I have my three database connectors there. Okay, let's get this connected, this very one here. So drag this so that you guys can see what I'm about to do. Okay, you see where we have inside the object inspector here, where we have connection string, click on that and click on the three dots. Now click on build and um, I'm going to select Microsoft Office 16.0 and the data that I'm looking for is right here, the database, look at it, it's right inside my folder here. If I select that database, I can always come right here, just right click and select copy the address. 
I remember the name is called uh, payroll underscore database okay so let's go for next and paste that source right here and I'm going to then add backslash then let's grab the name you see just press F2 copy that come right down here paste that right there and that is going to be dot a c c d b okay that a c c d b that is my data source so come right down here you see where we have admin get rid of that and the next thing is you see where we have blank right there uncheck the blank and let's try our connection by clicking on the text test connection there we go it is successful there click on advance and we want to make it read and write so make sure you check read and write and uncheck shared in click on ok you can check this that's fine so let's click on ok there and click on ok again there we go so we now have our ADO connection one connected straight to our database now the next thing we want to do is we come right down here you see where we have login prompt uncheck that if you don't uncheck that the system will ask you to enter password to make sure it's unchecked so that is fine now select ADO table when you select ADO table you now want to come here to the connection right there Okay, drop that down and select your connection one. This one, ADO connection one. There, we now officially connected that to the ADO table. But scroll right down. We now want to select the table. Come right here. You see where we have table name. Click on that. Drop it down. Select the name of the table. The name of the table is called rows. Payroll. Now scroll right up. We want to now activate that. See where we have activate? Check it, and that will become true. There, that is done. Now select the data source. All we need to do is just to connect the data source to the ADL table one, and come right here, data set. Click on that, and then select ADL table. That is it. All my connections done now if you guys let's look at the table here you see the table there's nothing in the table okay nothing there it's empty so close that however you can see the link has shows that uh, the table is officially connected to my application before i go ahead with the other connection i'm going to go straight here you see where we have payroll click on payroll database and now I want to connect the payroll database straight to the database itself this one okay select that and come right to the object property here select we need the data source let's make sure it's there make sure that's selected and there we go data source click on data source when I want to select data source one as you can see employee ID automatically appears the problem in I'm sure employee ID is occupying approximately 1000 plus of uh, width so right click on it and select column editor and here select show all add all fields if we select employee ID just like I said look at the width of employee ID is 1534 that is way too high so let's come right here and just change that to about 54 there we go you see name automatically appears if we select name name is in 1000 plus as well so I'm gonna make name maybe let's go for 54 as well 
the now selects oh that is name we can make that about 80 because there's a uh, first name and so name in there so address let's make it 120 or maybe 100 postcode 30 gender 30 department 54 position let's say 54 as well benefit so we can make that 30 salary is gonna be 30 as well there let's see how it's looking now all of those components are showing that's good all right over time we make that about maybe 44 let's go back to salary make that 44 um, benefit 44 position and postcode let's postcode will make that about 44 as well tax tax is showing 1534 we make the tax about 44 pension will be 44 as well pay date we can make that 54 payroll 54 payroll name 50 ni 50 ni code 50 tax code 50 make that 54 taxable pay student loan 44 pension pensionable 50 and I pay 50 gross pay 50 and let's go for debit debit is going to be 50 as well net pay 50 that is it all done okay that's fine if we scroll check that out now Make sure that is saved let's come back in here see all of these other components here I'm gonna select each individual component I will now want to add data source to each of them select it all let's keep going come up here select come right down there and that should be the last one or oh, let's include this as well so come right up here where we have the object inspector you see the data source click on that and that's it every single component here are now attached to the data source that is good now we then need to select each individual text box in here scroll up you see where we have the data data field click on that the data field for this is going to be employee id so let's see if we can find employee id in here there we go there that is employee id in there the next one is going to be full name it's coming here and look for full name there we go Follow by address. Then we have postcode. Postcode. Let's scroll right down. Yep. Yeah. Gender. I'll be a G. Position. There. And department. Let's see. There we go now city benefit come right here there basic pay overtime
tax. There we go. Pension. Okay, so all of that is done. Let's come right down here. Uh, let's take care of the gross and the uh, deduction. Gross pay. Let's see. Deduction. Now, let's take care of these ones here. Net pay. Scroll right up. Now, date. There we go. Tax period. Tax. Yeah, that's it. Tax period. Scroll right down. There, there we go. Then we have payroll name, NI number, NI code, tax code, taxable pay. There we go. Then we have student loan. Let's come right down here. Then we have pension, pensionable pay. And finally, we have NI, this very one here, NI payment, yep, that is it, all done. Okay, there's nothing on the access database itself, as you guys saw earlier, it's all empty. So we can always add our data here. All right, let's take care of the three combo box. Okay, so that when you click on them there will be data so let's exit out the exit is not working yet uh, i'm gonna come in here and right here no let's use a form crate so for this very one i think this one is called d yep yeah, that's it dbc tax page Okay, the period that I'm talking about the month so first of all let's declare a variable so I'm gonna call that I because I want to create um, let's create add the for loop for I equals one add a comma i will be less than and equals to 12 semicolon and we say i plus plus there and i'm going to now enter curly braces in there so this should have been i less than and equals to now now that is done i'm now going to paste that that is the name of that particular Combo box. Uh, let it point a uh, pointer to. Yeah, that is correct. Item. Then another pointer to add. And um, what is the value that we are adding? We adding i. There. Enter semicolon. So that is done. You see how easy that is. So if I run it now, let me save that first. Click on run. I see it's coming up. We should have 1 to 12 in there. So, why number 1, number 5, that is uh, May, this will be, that is period 1, January, February, and so on. Okay, let's take care of these other ones. This one is gender. Let's see. Let's come in here. And the name is gender. Grab that. Why this one is uh, department. Okay, double click on that again and come right underneath here. Gender is going to be let's add as follows. Let's grab all of this, paste that in there. And the gender is going to be female ladies first and the next one is male right so gender is taken care of there we go 
and we have mail here and the next one is DBC department okay so let's add that I'm just gonna make up some funny department and maybe this one can be our flying flying department or whatever or flying that's fine okay and let's add a couple more maybe this one can be computing this can be education and this let's call this um, I said medical yeah whatever that's fine so I'm just gonna add about four of those so if I run it now they all have their own data in there so let's see how that's gonna work we have male or female and we have flying or whatever you want in there and the month of payment there we go just something like that okay that's fine now let's take care of these exits I think exit in this C sharp is just uh, close something like that let's come right here double click on exit and we just enter close in there let's be sure that that works save I would have entered an exit with a prompt command but uh, let's just that's that would do anyway all right that's fine so save that okay now let's take care of these pay dates so that we just display the dates of payment so let's grab the variable name in there scroll right down double click on the form load again and inside the form load I'm just going to maybe right underneath here let's say time date this is more or less like the data type I'm gonna call it pay pay date that's the name of my variable so come right down here and now pay dates okay let's just say pay date equals now that is it done so let's come right down here paste the name of pay date and just add the following and that is going to be time and that will be equals I think we, we're gonna have to convert that to date to string and what date are we converting we converting the pay date there we go so that should take care of that so let's run that so the form create is taking care of all of those conditions here yeah, run that and we see how that works there we go we have the date okay that's fine okay guys now that this is done there's something we haven't put into consideration here supposing the payroll or the pay date is totally different and what do we do so what I'm going to do is let me exit out I'm gonna come in here okay that's the date and I'm gonna drag this I will now come into this my palette here let's just type in calendar I need the calendar peak I just drag that one here somewhere there right okay with my calendar peak in place I let's change the border the border color 
and we, I think maybe silver might be good but let's just make it gray a little bit yeah that's not too bad now what I want to do is you see this calendar picker Let, let's run it you see what I'm talking about just in case if the pay date is different what do we do we don't just leave it like that okay we want to be able to click on the calendar picker and just select whatever date we want it to be so I'm gonna exit out let's double click on the calendar picker now and in there we call our date point to text we will say that would be equals wanted to date convert date to string and what are we converting we're converting the content whatever is selected in the calendar picker dot date and there we go so this should have been point right let's come in here and just get this indented right I think that will take care of that so I'm gonna save that and let's run it one more time and see what's gonna happen so that should hopefully take care of that there we go it's coming up now right the date is 02-02-2022 so click on the calendar picker I wanna change the date your pay date is 28 there we go look at that and let's say is in March there that's the whole extent of this calendar picker all right that one is now sorted okay guys so let's let's move on to the next activity to be completed now the next thing I want to try and complete is to take care of uh, the total so whatever value you enter in here is all added up so let's exit out for now okay let's scroll right up there and declare some global variable so let's go right up here right here now I'm going to declare the following it's going to be double so let me grab hold of this paste that in there the very first one I'm going to call it inner city that's my very first variable then the next one is going to be big basic pay let's declare overtime as well and tax declare pension and let's declare student loan student loan and what is NI payment there those are my variables I have one two three four five six seven of those that I intend to use save that okay I'm going to declare some more double variable so this one I'm going to call it that is meant to be for the pensionable pay and this one or maybe I should just call it pay, P pay let's put pay there and the next one is going to be no, let's lose up a lowercase taxable pay comma and gross pay comma deduction I just call it deduct pay then I have period there we go all right so those are all the variables that I intend to use and these are the ones I use for my calculator now let's go scroll or let's go to the design view and I'm going to double click on the total button here double click on that 
now the first thing I want to do is you see the inner city yeah I think that's what I call the variable that to be equals we want to convert whatever is in that string to float and what am I converting that's going to be db dbe I think I call it CT benefit something like that I think let's see I think that's right city benefit okay yeah I got that right close this again all right that's the first one so whatever is in here is now assigned to this variable the next one is going to be basic pay basic pay is going to be equals to let's do exactly the same thing we're going to, and let's grab hold of the basic pay what did I call that come right here and basic pay that is it right there okay it's called that back in my codes so we just change that as for basic pay now over time come right down over time whatever we have in over time let's go back there and grab the name I believe it's going to be DBE over time let's copy that and just paste it here yep there's no error now there's another one I call gross pay let's see this very one here yeah gross pay is gross pay grab that back in the codes and come right down here now I'm going to say gross that will be equals I'm going to enter the pound sign let's say plus let's get that float to string float to string what am I converting to string that is going to be inner city and so on these three variables here let's copy those paste that in here we have one plus basic pay paste we have two and plus overtime grab that there okay that is taken care of now let's take care of the tax as well so I'm gonna come right down here so let's say tax and that will be equals all of the content in here let's grab a hold of all of these yeah paste that right here and we want to let's say multiply by maybe nine nine percent and divide that by 100 that would be the tax rate and let's close this here as well there we go we have the tax in place what about pension let's work out the pension come right down let's say pension and we'll make that up as well it's going to be all of these again paste that in there maybe you're paying about 15 percent of your wages as pension then what about student loan let's say student loan that's equals that and the student loan might be about five percent five percent now 
and I payment. That will be equals that. And let's say that's about 3%. There we go, all calculated. Now, our calculation, we need to add them into their respective text box. Uh, the tax that is called, let's come in here. All right, that's, then that's pension. Let's grab hold of that of pension. I can remember that of tax. Right, back in my code. We have pension. Oh, and we have tax. Let's come in here, tax. There. And the tax that is going to be in pounds. Let's say plus. Make that float. As float to. Yeah, grab a hold of this. I'm going to convert float to string task taken care of. Whatever pension, grab all of these. Paste that there. And change this to pension. That's pension there, grab pension. Paste it right here. There. There now student loan I think the student loan will be that come right down here D D E student loan and grab hold of all of these paste it right there and this is gonna be student loan yeah that's the variable name okay so we have the next one which is the NI payment copy student loan change all of these to NI payments copy this becomes NI payment and this becomes NI payment there we go no I think this name is wrong so let's check out the NI payment where is it? Go right up here. No, it's not there. NI payment. Oh, it's in lowercase. That's why. Change that to uppercase. And might as well just copy it still. Let's make sure the data set is correct. It's in NI payment as well. Okay, let's go back into our codes. Paste that in here. And why do we still have the error? Okay, let's say it's in lowercase the way it was before. I'm going to comment that out for now. And I'll check out why I have an error there. Let's see. Okay, let's save and just run. Run. And I'm going to now enter some value in here. Let's enter something here and see over time. Let's say that is zero. I think we need to put a default there. So if we click on this, there we go. Look at that. That's fine. So NI payments will happen. Okay. So that's working fine. All right. I think this NI payment, let's see. Okay. It's a package I. I enter L. Okay. Save that. Let's run it again run let's see there we go now enter whatever there and wages 
and over time let's say it's zero and then we need to enter default value in here or whatever okay and in here oh no we just need to click on this there we go look at that ni payment is working and so on right that is fine now let's take care of the deduction and the net pay and some other components in there and we will also take care of this as well because i want it the value to default back to zero so i'm going to exit out and right underneath here i'm still inside the total so let's come down here let's press enter now what we want to do is to get the deduction let's check out the name of the deduction first let's minimize this and that is deduction yes dbe deduction and this one is dbe net pay so double click on that and let's just press enter paste deduction there in the case of deduction i want the value that is going to be deducted to be the tax and so on that will be the tax, pension, student loan, and NI. So I'm going to let's grab hold of whatever has tax in there. Oh, that is it. I'm going to have to add all of this in here. Okay, let's just grab hold of this. Nah, there's no point. Let's grab hold of this one. Paste it right here okay so my deduction is going to be as follows tax plus pension there and let's minimize this then plus student loan and plus ni payment and put that in here for those of you who don't know what that means that's like your insurance payment all right that is that all done now let's take care of we need to take care of the the net pay so underneath here i'm going to come down here and net pay is i think it's called net pay uh, that was meant to be pay net pay in the case of net pay that is going to be I need the where we have the gross pay so let's say as tax and that will be equals we also need to convert we also need to convert float to string so let's grab all of these paste that here now my gross pay let's see gross pay I think I have it up there called gross pay let's let's come up here yeah it is called gross pay the gross pay is going to be this so let's grab this too um, come right down here paste that in here and that is me now deducting this from this there but for your information there's nothing in here why do I have this error let's check out the net page name let's come in here net pay yeah net pay copy that back in here net pay just change that to net pay and see okay we will start that out as time goes on anyway okay you see the gross pay there seems to be nothing in there or oh, this is it here i think yeah that is it so i'm gonna have to convert that all right so let's do this i'm gonna grab all of this and right underneath here the conversion will have to take place or shall we say gross pay equals all of this so grab this the choice is yours either way 
paste that in there and gross pay that will become everything we have in here copy that so we don't have to change that because it is already double and every content in here are double as well uh oh undo that let's move it forward a little bit and this one as well so we have gross pay now we need deduction copy that and paste that underneath here deduction will be equals the tax student loan and so on this is it right here grab hold of all of this that's the deduction paste that in there there so as you can see the error in here is gone as well okay that's fine okay let's save and run it just to see how that looks like for now run let's see there we go all right so I have some value in here anyway so let's see if it's going to give me the the deduction and the net pay yes it does okay that is good we still need to take care of all of this you see this other one those are the data of the employee now let's even check the uh, payroll data look at that you see the payroll data there all of the data is in there but gross no deduction and net pay is not in there let's come in here kind of like sort of like refresh or just click on this to refresh and see it should be in there now okay maybe if i log off and log back on okay we have we have that in there okay now let's continue i want to take care of the tax pay and uh, pension so what i'm going to do let's exit out i have those variable in here so let's come in here now we have tax pay that will be equals tax then we also have pension pay that will be equals pension remember those variables that I declare up there and I've already used them here look at that okay we now want tax payable or payable tax this is it here yeah it's called taxable payment grab that and pensionable payment okay so let's go back in there pensionable or taxable that is and that will be let's grab this I'm gonna grab hold of where do we have ta anything to do with tax here okay I'm gonna grab hold of this because I intend to convert it grab hold of that paste that in here there and that will become tax tax pay multiply by period I'm going to have to sort out that of period okay the period close that there now in the case of period let's take care of that now because of that error so that you guys will understand it more press enter paste that in there this is period let's come in here and I'll show it to you guys remember the one we created uh, using for loop inside the form create that is it right there period so I'm gonna grab whatever data we have inside period and I'll just add it in there so we'll grab this so we'll go back into the design double click on this so that will become 
we need to convert it to string to float string to float there we go so whatever we have in here is right in here now string to float so I think the period is in lowercase let's change that here yeah, I'm right and this is in should be in lowercase as well okay so we have one two here close this bracket again there so whatever we have in here we use that to multiply this to get the amount of tax that is paid so that is fine okay now the next thing we want to do now is we now want to work out the pensionable pay so let's grab the name where is it pensionable that is the name right there grab that double click here and come right down here the pensionable paste that in there and a pensionable payment that will become whatever we have in here multiplied by the period so I'm gonna come in here grab this paste that in here there and that would be pay multiplied by period yeah that is it all done so we'll have a good look at that okay that's uh, where the total is come right down and there I think I may have finish this activity but let's see let's run it first there might be some minor adjustment that needs to be carried out all right so remember the data that I entered before so if I click on this hopefully there's no error we have error okay where is that float okay I need here and here nothing happens in there okay exit out let's see what happened I think I know the reason why we have this error look at that I'm gonna do it again there it said it's not a valid floating point why because tax period is empty so if I say the tax period this is the second month of the year so if I select this now and then click on that there we go it is now valid all right the rest part of it we just need to enter individual information in there so all of this is taken care of but one thing first supposing we want to add new data when I click on this everything here is zero and the overtime let's say the overtime there's nothing in there check this out and overtime I leave that empty we end up with an error because it's not a valid information I agree this one okay but we still don't have enough information here look at what's going to happen yeah but if I enter zero in there that is fine so what I want to do is to default the value in here to zero so let's first of all let's say defaulting the value to zero means when I click on this I want it to be zero or when I click on this it should be zero now there's got to be a way out okay I click on this is zero all right let's exit out and the name let's find out what's the name if it doesn't work how I think then we'll do something else so I'm gonna grab this and in here as well I should change that value I think now let's double click on this guy here double click on that and unclick okay right in here so I'm going to let's use an if statement if DBA over time If that is uh, equals nothing, then I want the value in there to become zero. 
So let's just say the overtime should become zero. Okay. Let's enter zero in there. That's fine. Else, whatever is in there will be equals to whatever value we have in there. Uh, we go about that like that will be equals db overtime will be equals to whatever value we have inside db overtime. And the value inside the dbc tax period as well. I'm going to make that zero as well. So let's just grab all of this and paste it there. There we go. Why on the, on the form load as well, I would like the DBC tax period. I like that to have the v default value of zero as well. So let's come in here just in case to be on the safe side. Let's put in the value of zero in there. There. Oh, but when we run it, if I run it now, it will just show zero. Let me try it, else I will, I will get rid of it. Run. Let's see how that's going to look like. Uh, look at that. It's showing zero. So that I really don't want. Let's see. You see, it's showing zero. Okay, let's come back in here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that, that of uh, form load. Let's get rid of that. And let's run it. Save, let's run it again. There we go. Okay, so that's fine. And this is showing the right value in there. Only if it's empty, should it default back to zero? So we can also say if this is empty, but let's see what was the value in here before. It's not showing me the value in there before, but it's defaulting back to zero. So let's go back in there, back in here double click on this and just comment it out because it shouldn't be showing zero now let's see all right so when we click that is fine okay now the whole idea is just to remind the user to enter a value in there. Okay, that is fine. All we then need to do now is to enter details of employee. So let's say, let's come in here and check out this employee, the one with uh, 45 and 3,412 come in here. 45, 3,012. Let's give it. Uh, the following and the name let's assume the name is Kemi Johnson let's say Kemi Johnson and address number one Ghost Town or Sun Town something like that and postcode Queensland she's female and here position let's say she is a pilot department okay flying and date let's enter date of pay there Let's say she get paid this day. That's period two. That's fine. Her payroll name. Let's just say pilot. 
A9 number. A9 code. Tax code. There. So if we refresh that, I believe everything is in there. Refresh. Let's see. Insufficient key. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And let's click and see. Let's go back in there. We have all our details. That's correct. Now let's check. You see, it's populated straight into our own rules there. So it's working as we want. There we go. All of the informations are there. That is good. So let's go back. Now. The last thing, let's check if we have all of this information on the database. Open up the database, double click on that, and let's see what's going to happen with the database. Open up payroll. There we go, look at all of the information of Kemi Johnson. That is good, the system is working, guys. So I'm going to close that. And that's it and that's how you create your own payroll management system so with that guys i'm gonna call it the end of this tutorial i suppose you guys enjoy it um please do subscribe to my channel and you can also join to become a member of the channel you all have a nice day now and bye for now